Now don't get me wrong, there was lots to see in Osaka, like the floating gardens, the views, the towers, but we were a little tourist out, so we thought we'd get our party on. And boy did we get our party on. We went to a place called Joyopolis that had loads of interactive video games. When we went out, we met this guy from Holland. We found this little hole in the wall where you could play dice and win free drinks. If you lost, you won an even bigger beer! Back at the hostel, I saw a poster that said there was this bar filled with old school Nintendo games. We're talking NES, Super Nintendo, and 1064. Right up my alley. We finally made it back to the hospital. We had to pack our bags and leave, but not before I checked out the bonsai gardens at the top of the roof. Bonsais are my favorite! The view wasn't that great, but the trees were spectacular. Stunning, really. Overall, I'd say Osaka was a knockout. <laughs> well... Sally loves Harry, but Harry doesn't love Sally anymore. This is their story, and this is what Sally did. We were finally able to meet up with our buddy JJ, so we rented bicycles. Act now one. when you go to Nara, you go to Nara for one reason and one reason only. In case it wasn't clear, it's the Japanese. But just because they're cute doesn't mean they can't be vicious. We hopped back on our bicycles and we were off to go see the rest of the Believe it or not, sushi was hard to find in Japan. This is the first time we got to eat it. And when they say good things come to those who wait, boy do they mean it. now there have been doom laden predictions about this storm the biggest the world has seen so far this year as it came ashore in southern japan it was still packing powerful winds that lashed the coastline the good news is that vongfong has lost much of its destructive power today it was downgraded to a tropical storm meaning sustained winds below 120 kilometers an hour this is what vongfong looked like as it churned towards japan last week the massive storm system picking up more and more moisture from the warm waters of the Pacific Ocean. We had tried to venture out on the first day of Kyoto, but the typhoon had finally caught up to us. We were cold and wet and needed a good home cooked meal. You know, well, I'm a chicken fried, a cold beer on a Friday night, a pair of jeans that fit just right, and a radio. Exactly what we were looking for on this cold, wet day. We had a warm meal, steak, ice cream, and ocean. And boy, did I have ice cream. Well, I was raised up beneath the shade of a Georgia pine. And that's home, you know. Sweet tea, pecan pie, homemade wine. Where the peaches grow. And my house is The next day, we were back on the road. About. We thought we'd check out the farm country and see the sights. But feel when love is grown in southern ground. And a little bit of chicken fry. There was a lot of ground to cover in Kyoto. We started with a lot of temple watching. We got lost along the way. We came across an elderly man eating bread to fish. We had to see this for ourselves and join them. Ariel insisted on getting figs from this farmer, and I'm happy he did. They were sure good. What you drive or the price tag on your clothes. There's no dollar sign on a piece of We finally found the bamboo forest. It was stunning in every way. The tall stalks of bamboo reached straight to the sky. To a little bit of chicken fried. Cold beer on a Friday night. It was getting late in the day, but we still had a lot of ground to cover. So we were off to Monkey Mountain. See the love in my woman's eyes. Feel the touch of a precious child. And no mother's love. We 
we stumbled across an onsen, we thought we'd take this opportunity to relax and absorb the day. It was extremely relaxing and well needed. This onsen was filled with three pools, one with green water, white water, and clear water, and freezing cold water to boot. Our meals were delicious. Mine came with an authentic dragon egg. Khaleesi would be proud. Due to our relaxing experience, we had ground to make up. So we started at Mickey's Cafe, saw some left-handed lights, a bunch of teas, and then we made a wish. And it was off to the Golden Temple. After that, we were off to the Imperial Palace. What we didn't know is we had to register 24 hours in advance. I tried to get as close as possible, not knowing the walls were alarmed. I set the alarm off, and they politely asked me to turn the camera off. With no harm done, we are off to the Manga Museum, excited to see some authentic Japanese cartoons, only to find out it was closed. So we went to the temple and made a wish for our family. Before the day was done, we still have one more place to go, Mikashiki Market. Loads of different food, but one iconic feature there is octopus on a stick. We have almost made it to the big city of Tokyo, but first a quick stop in Yokohama. It was the first time we got to see Mount Fuji, and we were very excited. We met up with Lindsay's brother Nick and his wife Chia Kitterman. They were so much fun. They took us to a crazy place called Donkey Dorka or something like that, which was nine floors filled with everything. With no time to waste, we are off to Mount Fuji. It wasn't too clear because it was in Japanese, but we think it might have been closed for the season. We decided to go ahead and hike it anyways. It was a clear night and we could see the lights from a distance. We had finally made it to the one and only Tokyo. The first peculiar thing we saw was a bunch of Santa Clauses, so we thought we'd go investigate. They were doing an opening for the lush down there and handing out roses and teas. It was our first day in Tokyo and now we have a bunch of roses. We knew exactly what to do with them. We got out our translation book and looked up a really good line. After practicing Japanese a little bit, it was time. Success! Game on! There was so much going on in Tokyo with the bright lights and the colors, we thought we'd get overstimulated with some 3D stimulation. One thing every culture has in common is their love for beer. So we check out this museum to its fullest. There was a festival about an hour outside of Tokyo in Kawagawa. We knew some locals we met in Vancouver and they were happy to show us the roads. Okay, it was a big carnival with lots of games, but this one I had to try. If you were able to put the turtle in the bowl, you get the turtle! The next day in Tokyo, we went to a district called Takeshita. Yeah, that's right. Robot restaurant is exactly what it sounds like. 
and an experience I think everybody should try. It's basically Tokyo summed up. Okay, one more thing, really important. If you ever come to Japan, the first things you gotta experience is the toilets. Now, if you've ever seen that Simpsons episode where they have the colorful lights and the toilet sings to them, they are bang on. They have buttons up the yin yang on these things. And you better believe I pressed every single one of them.